Hi, my name is Felicia Villanueva with Yonkers Voice, and I'm here with our friend Elizabeth Fernandez. She is a positive woman living with HIV. She also has cancer in her throat, so bear with her while she tries to say her piece right now. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Fernandez, and I'm here to share a little bit about my story with you. She also has one more request before we start this interview. I would like to take a moment of silence for those affected and infected. Thank you. Elizabeth, so you are HIV positive. You are a positive woman. But you weren't always a positive HIV positive woman. So can you tell us a little bit about how relatable you are to a lot of people that may be watching this right now. Uh, I was diagnosed with HIV in the year 2000. I'm just like you and everyone else in the community. I love someone dearly and I trusted them with my life. Meaning I trusted them with my life because after several years of our relationship, which I thought was monogamous, I threw the condoms out the window. So I stopped Okay, so how did you find out that you were HIV positive? Unfortunately, being that it wasn't a healthy relationship, it severed. So several years after that relationship was over, I met a wonderful young man who I fell in love with. We were together for two years, still together currently, but however, two years into our relationship, And that's when you found out that you were positive. Yes. I had a pregnancy test done. And like any responsible woman should, I took the HIV test as well. Fear, not fearing anything. I felt that I wasn't at risk. I felt that I had not done anything wrong. You know, that not me mentality, it can't happen to me. And so many people live like that today. So... When you think about your relationship with the person you were with and the regular life you were living, what, how, what, what would you say to a young person right now that doesn't think of a condom being an option? How does, how does that work? You were in love with this person and you lived with this person and you guys were together for several years. What do you have to say about that? What do you have to say about your lifestyle and that it could happen to anybody? Well, basically, I was home raising two children, trying to be the best mother that I could be. I went back to school. I graduated from Bates University. I got my GED. I tried to bring my children up in a safe home with a mother taking care like this speaks to me a lot because oftentimes when we have HIV events and AIDS awareness events we're always targeting youth and with Elizabeth here Elizabeth was a mother is a mother living with a husband going to school going to work a regular life and HIV entered her home 
Now fast forwarding a little bit more than just your lifestyle before HIV, what was your immediate reactions when you were tested? Were you scared? How, how did that feel for you? It was terrifying. It was the most horrific experience and scary experience of my life. I went home and I cried. I couldn't believe this had happened to me. In my mind, it just played over and over how I was going to die. But how was I going to die and leave my children behind? How were they going to live knowing that their mother had HIV? So it was more than me. It was family and the fear of stigma. HIV stigma, it still exists. It's so powerful that some people become isolated just like I had done myself. How long were you isolated? And what event happened that made you decide, I need to speak up, there are more people like me what was that? Well, I did a lot of work and a lot of training in the HIV field uh, behind the scenes. Like, for instance, I would leave my community and go somewhere else to get trainings. I obtained a lot of certificates. I became part of Chickatelli University, Chickatelli Associates Leadership Training Institute for people like myself, for PWAs. <laughs> so that we can learn how to maintain our optimal health, how to stick to our adherence by applying to our regimen, taking our medicine. So once I learned how to do all those things to survive for myself, the need to understand what had happened to me, what was HIV, and was I going to live, and how long was I going to live, I decided to become involved in my community where at one point I was working with a local agency the sharing community at the sharing community they were doing an event here in Yonkers at Lincoln Park being that I was part of the uh, planning committee I uh, would find I would find myself involved in every part of it, in every aspect. However, we needed a speaker, and I refused to do it. I was afraid of what Yonkers would say. I was afraid of what my family would think. I was afraid how community would treat me. Would I ever be able to smile or walk down the street without being discriminated against? So because of all that, I put myself in someone else's shoes. Someone who may not have been as strong Congratulations. What were people's first reaction when you told them that you were a positive woman? Your family, friends, what were their first reaction?
feel pride. It's okay to feel pride in what you do because you're a human being too. And I love positive people. That's why I'm here. Let's end stigma. And let's end nature. Is there any types of discrimination or stigma that have came across your ears that you just couldn't believe? Yes. Don't drink out of that cup because she had something to drink. Don't use the same toilet bowl because she's out there. She used it. You better bring the bottle of bleach. Personally, I thank God I didn't feel that. Not from my family. But I have experienced discrimination in other communities. Elizabeth, I want to have you walk us through a day of yours. What does a day look like living with HIV? Not because we, we want to scare anyone into thinking, you know, you don't want to go down this road, but just to show people that it is not easy and you can live with it, but it's not easy. It takes a strong, positive person to live this lifestyle. What does that look like? And I see you, you brought some um, example of the medication you take every day. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I'm 
You are so strong. I, it's a pleasure being here with you. Um, so can we just educate our viewers for a second? Can we talk a little bit about what exactly HIV is and the difference between HIV and AIDS? Because I think that's another type of thing that gets um, miscommunicated. And also a little bit about anyone who's watching this video right now that's touched by your story, how can they help? Um, Elizabeth has a full story on women and girls AIDS, National AIDS Awareness website. National Women and Girls HIV Awareness Day website. Uh, being in honor of women and girls, March 10th is HIV Awareness Day. So I'm sharing a little bit of my story for all my young beautiful sisters, for all my seniors, for all the women that came before me and have opened these doors of breaking traditional code. So I just want to say thank you and honor all the women and girls. Okay. So March 10th is the National Women's and Girls AIDS Awareness Day. And you are also part of another event that's coming up the 26th. Uh, I'm part of a major campaign going on here in New York State. It's called HIV Stops With Me. And um, the photo, the launch will be on February 26th at the Black, uh, oh my God, at the Black Theater in Harlem. On the 26th of February. So soon I will be sharing with you some of the pictures from the campaign, uh, just expressing how we need to voice our opinion, hoping that HIV does stop with me and that we can't live in a world free of AIDS and see a generation who's never ever going to be touched by such an ailment or tragedy. So if you are watching this, and you want to know how you can help. Get educated. Stay safe. Is there any other last words you'd like to say? Uh, yes. There is a difference uh, between, you know, um, not caring about yourself and caring about your partner as well. I feel that Thank you, Yonkers Voice, for watching. That's all for today. And thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing your story. And I love positive people, too.